Over the past 30 years, I've been devoting my life to animal rescues in the south of England. If this roof collapses, we're both going to be in mighty big trouble. <coughs> Never has British wildlife been more under threat. Run, Alex. He's going to slip. People and animals are increasingly coming into conflict. This is within a mile of the M25. Ah, oh, stress. Oh, it was close. <laughs> After 16 years of Wildlife SOS on the television, this is our second series of Wildlife SOS online. In this episode, a deer is running loose in a school playground. He's quite an old boy too, he's at least four or five. A sparrowhawk leaves us scratching our heads. And an emotional badger rescue will push me to my limit. Ow. Peaceful spring days are never quite peaceful at Wildlife Aid. And today was no exception. We had a deer rescue. Think positively. It's all going to go wrong. These rescues often need a great deal of teamwork, so three keen volunteers join me to help. The teacher of a nearby primary school had called us for help after finding a deer running nervously in their school playground. The children were safely kept inside while we checked out the situation. He's still there because I can see the leaves moving, so lucky for you. So we've got an adult roe deer, haven't we? We've got a bowing up right there. We run, him along. run him along that way. Let's see what's the other side of that Yeah, let's go, go and have a look. We'll leave him there for a minute. So we're just looking at possible escape routes now. Rather than having to contain the deer, we're seeing if we can drive him somewhere where he can escape. But the, you're looking at these fences, it doesn't look as if he can get out too much. They're quite high, these fences, Pete, aren't they? This is the kids' pond area. That's not ideal by any stretch, is it? I think we'll go straight back and get nets and gloves now rather than stress them out a second time. Look, we've got an audience. Oh, oh there he goes. Look. He's quite an old boy too. He's at least four or five. He's not going to be easy to catch, to be honest. And with those antlers, you want to be really careful, guys, because yeah. he's going to thrash around like crazy. So as with any rescue, Whatever you plan never happens. But what we're planning at the moment is to grab him, if we can, get one of these chairs and tables really near to that fence, and then just lift him over the fence and let him go next door where the fences are very low. Yeah. Right, gloves for everybody, nets for <coughs> us all, and pray. Right. Whatever you do, it's gonna do something you're not expecting, yeah. but yeah, we'll try. Mm -hmm. With our net deployed, we were ready for the deer, or so we thought. We coming to you! If he does start to come towards us, you're going to have to run like hell. We're walking down, Pete. Much to our luck, the deer ran straight into the fenced pond area. Right, let's just slide in this, come in with this net. Come, come, come. With him contained in a smaller area, theoretically, he should be easier to catch. <laughs> but even in this smaller area, the deer was incredibly quick, which makes him very dangerous. Oh, Pete, be careful, man. In a flash of inspiration, I threw the net towards the deer. Careful. Get the antlers, get the antlers. Good boy. Hold them away from you. Hold them away from you. Well done. Well done. Everybody happy? Let him calm down for five minutes, yeah. his stress, and then we can... Time was of the essence, and we had to quickly find the ideal place to release it. Over here, Pete. Luckily, there was an open wood on the other side of the fence, 
perfect for him to find his way home. Deer get stressed very easily and are prone to capture myopathy when handled. It was crucial to let him go quickly, but safely and as soon as possible. What we're trying to do is walk him a bit, so Colin, Colin and I have got these antlers quite firmly. Be careful how you walk up here, guys. You don't want your fishing and falling. Goes. Watch your faces, watch your bodies. Although this looks quite violent, it's by far the quickest and safest way to free the deer. Right. Right, go Connor now. There you go. <laughs> Good rescue. Come on. Good rescue. See how strong they are? You got the leap. That was incredible. Well, I think it's an amazing team effort. Uh, and to get it and get it back out is just the best thing in the world. A rescue release is always the best thing we ever do. And the adrenaline was kicking like crazy. The power they've got, these deer, is just staggering. But I think the throw, not trying to be immodest, the throw was just lucky, to be honest, because if it hadn't slowed down, it would have done itself damage. But just to slow it down, just for those few seconds so they can grab it, great. Great effort, lads. Very, very, very well done. Many of the animals we try to rescue are incredibly difficult to catch and are often driven solely by their survival instinct. Whatever their condition, they will always find a way to make it difficult for us. Well, it's half past ten at night. We just had a call out about an injured badger. Um, calls like this are very difficult because the people saw it, they were driving on, they didn't stop, but they saw it drag itself into the bushes. So not only do we not know exactly where it is, but if it's crawled into the bushes, it's going to be like looking for a needle in a haystack. Um, they've offered to come back if necessary, so I said we'd go and have a quick look. So this is where the guy told us roughly where it was. Right, it's Simon from Odd Off Abe. We're at the scene. We, we've had a quick... I called the man who had found it and asked him to join us to show us the exact spot. And this turned out to be 200 yards further down the road. We're driving up this way, so this is... Oh, there he is. That's a much long way past 50 yards. Hiya. Right, this is where it was, is it? Yeah. But it crawled itself off into here it somewhere. Of, it couldn't even... It hardly got up there, so it was proper... Yeah, the back legs were... There was a pheasant in the road as well, which You're we pretty sure it's here-ish? Yeah, the pheasant we threw. We threw oh, there's the pheasant, yeah, okay. Definitely... <laughs> there's actually a badger run going through there. You, you, you can see a badger run going through. It was sitting in the road for about, how long was it sitting there for? About five minutes. Just looking around, it couldn't move, and then it sort right. of dragged itself it's here. Okay, guys, well, I'll let you get, get yeah, back and have, no have, have a warm yeah. evening. Don't worry, we'll have another look in the morning. Thanks Don't worry. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, okay. bye. We've got a thermal camera, which if the undergrowth's not too thick, sometimes gives us a signature. Going through, the ground's quite cold. Interesting enough, this pheasant hasn't been dead that long because there's the heat signature of the pheasant. I think he's just been hit by a car um, and the badger thought his luck was in for an early dinner. But sadly, the pheasant is not eaten and the badger's nowhere to be seen. It doesn't look very good, and if the badger was dragging its legs, it doesn't sound like a good prognosis to me. I was about to give up, but Laurie, our cameraman, took one last look deep into the undergrowth and spotted the badger. How far is he? About five metres from where I am now. Got the camera? Yep. Happy? Yep. So I want a grass brunner. Grass brunner cage. Wait, this badger is not looking good. He was in shock and could barely stand. That's it. No, not the moment. Ow! I've got a bramble in my ear. Ouch. Very poorly looking badger. He's going to try to probably wander off. He's trying to go off now, actually. I just want to see if he's losing his back legs at all. He is losing them a bit, which is good, but we're going to lose him in a minute. He's going, he's going. 
Even with such extensive injuries, its instinct was to hide and get away from us as soon as possible. It's an impossible line. I don't mind crushing through undergrowth, but we're not even going to achieve anything by crushing through this. And if we do crush through too hard, it's just going to leg it anyway. So we need to get around behind him, that's the trouble. It's even more dense down there. Whilst I went round the other side, Laurie stayed put to keep an eye on it. In there. Simon? I'm Sam, I'm with you. The badger had buried himself deeply within the roots and branches of the tree, making recovery incredibly difficult. So even if we grasped him, we couldn't pull him out because the trees would stop him. He's got one, two, three, four big branches just blocking him all the way. Mate, you couldn't have got in a worse bloody position. That's me in the mud. Hey, I can see him, my baby, but you're not helping. I can see his eye, he's breathing, his nose is all scrunched up in the bushes. I can't get him out. He's desperately trying to think of some scheme, some plan. If it wasn't a badger, you'd scruff it, but with a badger it would be suicidal. Whilst all this was going on, we had some unexpected visitors. See, I've got in front of... Hello? Probably is, please. You parked your car up here? Yeah. Come out. Oh, hi, are you the police? Yeah, we do. Oh, we've got an injured badger. We're from Wildlife Aid, the Wildlife Rescue Charity. <laughs> was it injured on the road? Yeah, he got hit on the road, right. crawled in here, little bugger, and he's gone between, he's gone between a log and a great mound and a tree root right. and he's just wedged himself in. Now most animals I put my hand in and grasp it, but as you realise with a badger. With all plans failed so far, we desperately needed to find a new way of getting this badger out. Night rescues are often due to road traffic accidents and some can be especially surreal. A few days before, we were called out to a motorway services just off the M25. The AA were tending to a van with a damaged radiator grill when they discovered that the cause of the accident was still moving in the engine bay. So we've got a bird of prey was hit on the motorway. And the feathered hitchhiker had wedged itself under the wheel arch and we needed to extract it to see its condition. In here, Laura. Have a look at the light. It was quite difficult to spot, but the feathers it left behind were a sure sign of its presence. Is that a kite? No, or up high. Right down there. And there's the kite right down there. I don't think we can get him out of there, to be honest. Um, let's have your torch again, AA man. See, the AA can do anything. <laughs> it's proven. I wonder if I can get him out of there. If I lift him out of there, I don't know if he's going to come past all those pipes. I'm not sure it's not a pheasant, actually. I think it's a pheasant. Let's just see. Pheasant. Sorry guys, no excitement. It's not a bird of prey, it's a pheasant. I did say it could be a pheasant by the look of his back. Right. You hold that for me, young man. You become an assistant surgeon. Right, how do we get that far down in the car? Let's just see if I can get him. If I can grab him, it'll be alright, but he's, he's right at arm's length. Yeah. You can't see. Stop wiggling. Stop it. The pheasant was so deeply wedged right at the bottom of the engine bay that it was very difficult to reach. Yeah. Right, there's a large hole in the grill where the bird obviously went in. Most what amount of damage they can do. But I still don't get my hand in there either. They went in there and round, didn't they? Yeah. Right, young man. Do your stuff, I like skillful one. Sorry, Simon. Right. Uh, <laughs> got out. No, you can see him right there. Oh, yeah. OK, so... <laughs> oh, he's gone back the other way. I haven't even got him there. Stop wriggling. He's gone back the other way now. Right, I've got 
I can feel him now. I've got hold of a wing, which is not what I want, but I'm just holding it gently, softly going away from it. I'm trying to work my way up the wing until I get to a bit of body. I don't want to let go of the wing because I'm going to drop the bird. Come on, pheasant. Right, I've got a neck, so hopefully we can get him up through this gap. Come on. Preferably without breaking his neck. Come on. He's put all these pipes in an engine. Nicely, bird. Silly pheasant. I'll tell you. Come on, come on, come on. Making sure he doesn't get snagged on anything as he comes up through. At this second, bird of prey, my bottom. Doesn't actually look horrendously damaged. Both legs are working. Yeah, he probably has actually. Right, we'll get him home and sort him out. Thank you to the AA, but they're only the ninth rescue service. We're actually the third rescue service. In you go, fella. Don't fly away right now. Come on, in you go. Good boy. Cool, gentlemen, thank you for stopping, thank you for calling us. One the first. Well, that, that was a really funny but nice little rescue. But the damage, I mean, he'd gone through a really solid plastic grill and was sitting in the bottom. If that had happened to me and I thumped through it, I'd be have blood everywhere. And the pheasant seems reasonably unharmed. Um, the guys are in quite a lot of amusement and we're going home. Back with our injured badger, I had to think of another plan. Right, let's go back in there. Ow! Bloody hell. Sometimes I wonder why I do this job. We've gone back to the car. Sadly, we haven't had any brainwaves. The badger hasn't moved an inch. He's in exactly the same place he was. He's just, well, I can't get him to go backwards. This is the trouble. He's just. Absolutely wedged in. I modified a swan hook to try to lift the badger's head. Come on, where's my grasper? I just don't think he's going to give me enough to get the grasp around him. Come on, badger. Come on. I'm sorry that you don't like me doing that. So I've got the grasper halfway around his neck. I'm trying to push it around. Oh, he's biting the grasper now, which is in a way is a good thing because it means that I've got the grasp all the way around him. But it's such a tiny hole he's got to come out of now. I'm not sure it's going to work. We've got the cage, we've got everything ready in case. But I'm not holding my breath on this one. I've got him, look. But he's fighting like crazy, that's the trouble. They fight like crazy. Come on, all right, my fella, I know. I need you out, my boy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, boy. Good fella, good fella, good fella, good fella, good fella, come on, come on, come on, it's a big badger, big badger, come on, in you go fella, get him. come on, in you go, good boy, come on, put your foot in, good boy, well, I tell you now, quite frankly, I didn't think we stood a chance in hell in that. Oh, and he's not the lightest of badgers anyway. So as soon as we get off camera, I'm making the cameraman carry this back. The policemen stayed on the side of the road and were happy to see a successful outcome. Yeah, we got ourselves a badger, which is not short of a miracle, to be honest. Oh, badge, you're not the lightest of badgers. I'm beyond knackered now. Oh. With the badger safely in a cage, we rushed it back to the centre. Right, let's get the badger up. I'm still absolutely shaking. I've got such an adrenaline rush. I get such a, a mad charge of energy from those rescues, which are really impossible. And you, even when you're doing it, you've no idea how you're going to do it. You just do your best. We've got a very big badger who's pretty poorly. So 
So we're going to have a look at him before we decide what we're going to do. So it's now five past midnight, on call 24-7. So 14.3 with the cage, minus 2.62 equals 11.68, which is exactly the same weight as the other badge we've got in, so that's interesting. Oh, let's get this badger into DS2, see what's going on. We have these multi-purpose sheds. We've got heat lamps. They're always really made up in case we need them. Come on, badger wedge. Badgers have this knack of putting themselves in a comatose-like state when they get hurt. They sort of shut themselves down for up to three or four days while they decide they're going to get better. He's been through an awful lot. He's obviously been hit by a car tonight. He's then crawled off. He's got a lot of blood in his mouth. All right, my badge. Let's get you out of here. Come on. Come on. Okay. There we are. Okay. Poor badge. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, all right. I think he feels as much like eating as I do this time of night. We've got a bowl for food and a very poorly badger, I think, with a very big headache. He really is right on the verge of death. It's whether he's got the strength now to put himself back out of it. But he's asking a lot, but we'll, work, we'll do everything we can. But he's got to do quite a bit of work himself. Hey Badge, are you still with us? Badge, don't you tell us we did all that work for nothing? Hey, Badge Wedge, Badge Wedge. We go from the elation of a rescue, all the hard work. We get him back and he doesn't make it. That's what's called bursting your bubble, isn't it? It's always so heartbreaking to see an animal die after working so hard to try to save it. It would be easy to think about giving up, but there are still animals in need and whilst we mourn every loss, we have to move on to our next rescue. Okay, so we're off on a rescue, which is yet another bird of prey in a warehouse. In fact, it's a garage this time, but very high ceilings, mezzanine floor. They haven't let us go in until they finish work, which is now. So I'm off with a big squad of helpers because these rescues can go either very well or very badly. All right, let's go and see what we've got before we start getting stuff out. Well, okay, so what have we got? The same perch for about an hour, an hour and a half. Right. The garage was huge, with so many shelves and beams for the bird to perch on and hide from us. Yeah, here we go. Oh, no. We can stock up on car parts anyway while we're here. It's just going down the other end. It's just going down that way. Our trapped friend was a sparrowhawk. Did he go down that side as well or not? Does he stay this side? Yeah. Just done it now. Let's go and have another look. Okay. I've left the, the doors open all day, but... Yeah, they very seldom go down. It's, yeah, I'm not ever so hopeful on this one, to be honest. Yeah, um, we'll get some good. kit and some nets and sort it around. Right, how many of us are there? Four of us, aren't we? Take sensible nets, one. This is where we make ourselves look stupid. <laughs> no, if you had a code, like, kind of mezzanine, call this A over here, and that's B over there, on so you know which way it's going because we can shout to each other, it's over at A. And we'll forget, I'll say, which one's A? <laughs> a? 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 <laughs> the bird was well out of reach and on the other side of the mesh. I'll see if I'm getting back onto the mezzanine, Rich. I'll go down with a big cart pole. Should we start getting next done Yeah, see if I can push him this way. And then you guys try and coordinate it a bit. The challenge was on and we had to be playing our best game. There he is up there, if you want to get a shot. Rich, I'm going to try to drive him back into the mezzanine area, yeah? OK. OK, he's over. Right, now we need to find the bird again. Right, OK, OK. He's over there, back in there again. Go on out the door, buddy, go on. 
Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh, right past my net. The bird kept avoiding our nets with ease and always perched on the most awkward of beams. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. It's plastic, it's all right. <laughs> Eyes on anyone? Ooh. Honestly, guys, let him perch and then go for him. In flight, you'll be so lucky. You can't move in here. Well, of all the places we've had Sparrowhawks track, this really has got to be the worst. There's so many obstacles which are going to stop us catching him and to get it in mid-flight would be pretty much a miracle. We've got to get him so he's a bit tired and just sitting tight and then get the nets up either side of him. Yes, yes, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Oh, damn it. That's what I was trying yeah, to so quick, isn't it? <sighs> he just went into the small room, guys. After almost an hour, we were still unable to catch it. Come on, buddy. No, you just, honestly, all I can say is how we've always done it. And that is you get him on a pole where he can't see you. And both nets really low. Yeah. Take them both up at exactly the same time and do the pincer. Right, come. Ready? <sighs> Getting him in flight would just be really beyond luck. We were losing hope and beginning to wonder whether the bird would outwit us. Yes! There you go. Oh. Well done. I'm sorry, Simon. I haven't let it go. <laughs> right. Where should we go, Laurie? I want, I want Simon to dine out on this one. Yeah, should, we, should we go into a really small room just in case? Yeah, go down yeah. there. What have we got? Over to you. We checked the bird over to make sure it was okay. He's not horrendously thin, which makes me want to just release him so he can perch up tonight and get himself some breakfast yeah. in the morning. Yeah. I felt a lot worse. He's got a, he, he's he's got got a bit upset with me, hasn't he? Yeah. Right. Without waiting any longer, it was off outside to return it to the wild. All right, fella. All right, fella. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. You're free. Don't go into any garages. Come on. Giving an animal a second chance is always the most rewarding feeling, and a great way to end the day. So who caught him? It might, might be me, Simon. Well done. Well done. <laughs> All credit to Mr. Richard Simmons. Not only a fantastic wildlife artist, but now also a great sparrow hawk rescuer. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel by pressing the red button. And make sure you hit the bell to get notifications of our latest content. If you want to help us save wildlife, please donate. Every pound you give will help us to save more wildlife.